In the book of Mark chapter 8, Mark chapter 8, from verse 34, Mark chapter 8, from verse 34, and when he had called the people unto him with his disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. These are the basic principles of discipleship. First of all, he has to deny himself. Secondly, he has to take up his cross. That's what, where we got the doctrine of bearing the cross. He has to deny himself. These are the basic principles of Christianity. There is a personality that is trapped in your soul. And there is a personality upon your regeneration that is trapped in your spirit. The personality that is seeking expression through your spirit is Christ in you. And that's your description. That is your description as a new created being. The personality seeking to find expression from your soul that takes advantage of all of the emotions and motions of the flesh. That personality has been nailed to the cross. And that personality must diminish so that the personality in your spirit must increase. And so one of the fundamentals of discipleship, following Jesus, learning Jesus, is that the believer will have to come to a point where he denies himself. Because when somebody comes down and gives you a slap, the flesh that is in you will react. And say, the worthy response for this kind of infliction, affliction, is double slap. It's the flesh that is educating you to respond that way. That you that is fighting to restore your image under such circumstances is not the Holy Ghost. And that you should be committed to death. You should be denied. That you must not be allowed expression. So there is a principle of denial of self that is critical in the issue of following the Lord. Then the next thing is that we will have to bear the cross. You see, being on the cross and bearing the cross are two different things. You know, we were included with Christ in his death, in his burial, and his resurrection. That was an act of God's sovereignty. He exercised his authority to include us. So that as God was dealing with Christ, he was dealing with us. That's a wonder. Because there was no way I could have killed myself and still remained alive. And the sentence that was upon us was a sentence of death. So Christ came to pay that price. And according to the justice system of heaven, because I believed in his sacrifice, it was logically calculated as if I died. So my death was factored in Christ. My burial was factored in Christ because I was included in him by an act of God's authority. However, you will still have to bear the cross. Now, um, the cross. Hallelujah. When a man in those days is bearing the cross, it means that the man is on his way to slaughter. Is that true? It's on his way to slaughter. Okay, as you are going to slaughter with the cross on your hand, and somebody say, they are selling a house now. The house is 50 million. Are you interested? You see, there are many things you cannot be interested in just because you are bearing the cross. If you are bearing the cross and you are making a motion, and then they say, oh boy, one babe don't do real. <laughs> you cannot be concerned with babe again because of there's something that you are bearing. And the protocol of the cross will not stop until everything that you have confidence in, everything that is of the old creation, that still finds a support system within your civilization, is, receives the death sentence. And you don't have to grow bearing the cross. That's why Jesus gave us the, um, the, the, three basic, the three basic considerations 
of every true disciple. And then finally, we will have to follow him. It's very difficult to follow Jesus. You can't actually follow him in the flesh. Because the last time he told you that you should wake up in the night and pray, you disobeyed. You didn't quite follow him. The reason why it is difficult for you to follow him is because you have not denied yourself. You have not done the other things that should clear the way for following. When he was calling you to pray in the night, you had an argument that you were tired. That argument was valid because you had not denied self. The two major obstacles to following Jesus have to be removed. Denial of self and a willingness to bear the cross. We are still going to touch this scripture subsequently as we establish the layout of discipleship. I have discovered that the average believer, probably in Africa or in our generation, was not properly introduced to the subject of discipleship. So we have a challenge. Now, so that's the basics of discipleship. So come with me, come with me, as I um, lay the foundation. For whosoever will save his life will lose it. This is the golden principle of the kingdom. Whosoever will save his life we lose it. Now, this scripture is not, doesn't look like something that is intelligent. Can you give me the scripture I'm reading? I'm reading 35. Can you jump to 35, please? Okay. He's not here. For whosoever will save his life will lose it, but whosoever shall lose his life for my sake... And for the gospel's sake shall save it. So Jesus is saying, you will lose your life. And this you will lose your life is in two contexts. First of all, you had your plans. You had your goals. Just like a brother asked me, what about our goals? What about hope? According to my goals, I should not be in Nigeria now. The ancient goals that I had. I should be, by now my, my utterance would have been influenced. Accent, I would have had picked up a different accent by now. Somewhere, um, somewhere, somewhere, somewhere. According to my plans. But as I began to press into God, I found out that my essence was domiciled in a city called Makodi. And for those of you listening to me, that have not seen Makodi on the map, your map is not complete because um, God resides in this city. Uh, so God decided to locate me where he is residing. And according to his plan, Makodi is my place of primary assignment. And so I am happy with being in Makodi. So in the process of serving Jesus, I died to my ambitions. I died to my goals. And I picked up his own goals. I picked up his own plans. And don't get me wrong. It is God's plan for me to be in Makodi. Are you with me? And because God has domiciled in me in Makodi, he, he will support my life. He will make sure that I prosper in the place that he has planted me. He will make sure that he empowers me to be capable to dispatch, discharge my responsibilities, my obligations, even as I attend to his ordination for my life. God is a balanced God. But you cannot expect that you are running with your agenda and then you are expecting God's support. You are already on your own, so you need to pay your fare. So if we want to get God to become involved, become responsible for our lives, then there is an inevitable requirement of us subscribing absolutely to God's ordination, to God's will for us. So that's the first definition of losing your life. You lose your ambition, especially the ones that are in contradiction to the mandate of God, the purpose of God for your life. And every believer is supposed to be very busy prosecuting 
the intent of God for his life. You are supposed to be in a desperate competition, not with your brother or sister, but with yourself. So that in your work with God, there should be no better yesterday. Your compliance, your yieldedness today is better. And many people, many people have this story of a better yesterday in their work with God. It means you stumble on an idol that you are serving in, in your journey. That's the only reason why you can have that out, outcome. Because the operating system of the new covenant is a glory that excels. It, it's not capable of having a better expression previously than now. It's a glory that excels, not the type that was on Moses' face that was diminishing. Glo Moses' glory was diminishing, but we are in a covenant that guarantees that the glory will excel. I know of a great preacher, and he always speaks about 1983. In 1983, what happened? He was a prayer warrior in 1983, and he went high with God. And he always tells the story of one of those days in the afternoon he was basking in the Holy Ghost. Uh, then he was living in a one-bedroom apartment and it was a compound uh, situation. And uh, somebody died. Then his neighbor died while he was on his knees. And he rose up from his prayer place furious. Why would death be able to come close when he's communing with the king? And he went there and demanded life. And the dead that was dead indeed, he came back to life. He, the person died 12 midnight, and the wife was praying, praying, hoping that he would rise up. And then they were waiting for the man of God to open his door so that they could tell him that this, your neighbor, has died. The moment they told him, he just 